I got back up on my feet as Tino called us to him. He announced, Our daddy and Tio, Tio Carlos are going to keep trying. Luis said that the rest of us have to go inside. Right now. He'll call me when we can come back out. We all trudged obediently over to the Quonset hut. I walked inside. I felt the blessed heat. I collapsed on the floor and collapsed on the floor. Victor picked me up into a sitting position. Then Teresa appeared in front of me with a cup of coffee. She said, do you like cream and sugar? I shook my head dumbly. I said, I don't know. She smiled. Let's find out. I tried to take the cup from her, but my fingers wouldn't close around the handle. Teresa stooped down, held the cup to my mouth, and I took a sip. It made me shiver. I took another, then another. Finally, I was able to hold the cup in my hands. Tina said, Fisherman, last time you were here, you collapsed because it was too hot. Now you're collapsing because it's too cold? What's up with you? I couldn't even think of a reply, less, much less make one. I sat there in kind of a coma for a long, long time. Fina. Finally, Tina's walkie-talkie cracked to life. I heard him say, All right. That's what we're waiting to hear. He turned to Victor. Luis says the new grove is he holding steady at 29 degrees, and the high spots of the grove are showing 28. He says the worst is over. The temperatures are going back up. Victor and Tino clasped hands, but Victor was solemn. So how much dead wood you got out there? I don't know, man. Anything in those low spots has had it. He turned to include me. It got too cold down there for too long. But hey, we're still in business. Tino, Victor, and the boys got, got to go back out. So I struggled to my feet. Tino turned to Teresa. No way he's going back outside. Orders from Luis. Teresa pointed a stern finger at me. You heard that. Now don't move from here. I'm going to get you some blankets. I could barely move. I could barely speak. But suddenly, Luis entered, and I knew I had to. He said, Paul, are you all right? I looked up at him and tried to focus my eyes. I stared hard at his left temple. There it was. I could see it in the light. It was a dark red bruise, deep set, like a birthmark. It curved over his eyebrow like a dark red crescent moon. I whispered, yeah. Tino said you were in bad shape. I was a little frozen. I'm okay now. Do you want to go to the hospital? No, no way. I'm feeling better already. He studied me doubtfully. I blurted out, listen, Luis, we only have a couple minutes and I have to tell you something. I saw you at Lake Windsor High School. I saw what you did. Luis straightened up. I saw you face down Eric and those other guys and I saw Arthur hit you with a blackjack. His hand moved automatically to his temple. Is that what that was? Yes. And you have to believe me, Luis. They're dangerous. They're very dangerous. Luis, to my amazement, smiled. He was about to reply when the door at the far end opened and Teresa returned. He said, I'll talk to you about this later. Teresa came up and handed me two thick green blankets and a white pillow. Luis went back out and I crashed. The next thing I knew it was 630 and the crew was coming back in. Henry D said to me, the sun's coming up. We made it through the night. I pulled off the blankets and stood up, humiliated, but Tino came right up to me and said, Hey, fisherman, thanks for helping us out tonight. He held out his hand and I shook it. I said, Tino, I'm really sorry about what happened. What? Hey, man, you're not used to this kind of work. No, not that. I mean at my house. Tino shook his head. Oh, that. Well, we never should have gone over there. Yes, you should. You should go over there. You're my friends, or I want you to be my friends. You're welcome at my house. T Tino nodded then said, You can be our friend over here, all right? I shrugged and nodded. He added, Our daddy's driving to the takeout for some egg McMuffins. You down with that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and Luis says he wants to see you outside. All right. I went back and found Luis kneeling by a golden dawn tree with his face buried in the green leaves. I said, Can you smell anything now? He laughed. Yes, I can. He sat back and looked at me. I can smell what it will be like. The golden dawn survived. Oh, yeah. They all survived. They were the safest ones. When you're little like this, you can just cover it up with dirt and you'll be okay. He checked behind him and said, I want to finish our conversation because I want you to know what's going to happen. Okay. You know those two black dudes who were out there? One of them is Chandra's brother. Yeah, Anton Thomas. Right. Well, Anton and the other dude, the muscle man, don't care too much for Eric Fisher or his friend. I said, Arthur Bauer. Right. They told me to come back on Monday and we'd take care of business. They say that all the players have to be there on Monday to turn their equipment in. Is that right? I don't know. That sounds about right. I'm just telling this so you'll know. You seem kind of scared of Eric and Arthur Bauer. Yeah, I am. Who wouldn't be? Luis answered simply. I wouldn't be. They're punks. He pointed one rope-like finger at me. And you shouldn't be either. You watch what happens on Monday. If Anton keeps his word, two punks are going to have new attitudes right around three o'clock. Luis's uncle walked up and started talking to him. So I drifted back inside, thinking about my fear of Eric. How could I be so totally afraid? And Luis be not in the slightest bit afraid of the exact same thing. Which one of us saw it wrong? Teresa brought out a nine-inch portable TV. 
and we all gathered around to eat our egg McMuffins. The news people said that the cold front was now moving out of our area, but it left a lot of damage behind, and it had put some area growers out of business. They showed a picture of a grove that had been iced over. It was now dripping in the sun. Everyone in the hut watched in silence. After the news, Victor and his boys headed for home. I stood outside and waited for Mom. She pulled up right at 8 o'clock. Her first words were, Did you stay up all night? No, I slept. Paul, you look awful. I slept, Mom, but I think I'm coming down with a cold. Mom reached over and put the back of her hand against my forehead. Yeah, you and half the population of Lake Windsor are down, she said. Well, I'm not going to have you sitting in a freezing cold football stadium. You, stadium. you need bed rest. You're right. I'd be better off at home. Mom thought for a minute and added, Your father isn't going to like this. I know. Just tell him I need my sleep. Mom sighed again. I will, but you had better sleep. I will. And I will, just like the rest of the crew. But first, I had to write all this down. Thanks for coming by. Don't forget to like and subscribe.